Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we will be learning about the dermoepidermal junction. So the DEJ is one of the most important structures of the skin and not only is it important uh, for the dermatologist to understand the intricacies of the dermoepidermal junction but if we want to learn about the immunobullous disorders especially the pemphigoid group of disorders the structure of dermoepidermal junction is very important. Moreover, it is also very important for the NEET exam. So the NEET PG exam, it usually has a question with the, either a immunobullous disorder or directly from the dermoepidermal junction, the structures of the dermoepidermal junction. So let us start learning the dermoepidermal junction with, we'll try to simplify it, we'll try to break down the structure. First of all, we should know that dermoepidermal junction, it is a type of basement membrane. So what exactly is a basement membrane? So the functions of basement membrane are that it will support the differentiated cells. It will maintain the tissue architecture. It will help in the permeability barrier and it will also determine the polarity of the basal cells. So the dermoepidermal junction is an interface between the lower part of the epidermis and also the epidermal appendages. So it is separating two parts it is separating the lower part of the epidermis and the epidermal appendages from the upper part of the dermis so for easy visualization we have a diagram here so this is the dermoepidermal junction now over it lies the epidermis so these are the basal cells of the epidermis these are the basal keratinocytes of the epidermis and this is the dermis. So we can see that the upper part of the dermis and the lower part, most part of the epidermis is being connected by the dermoepidermal junction. Now let us break this down further. In this diagram, we see that there are two attachments. One, one attachment is the one which is happening between the keratinocyte and the dermoepidermal junction. And the other is the cohesion between the keratinocytes. We see the cohesion between the keratinocytes. So when we break it down further, we will see that there are two structures that we will be talking about. There are two structures that we will be talking about. One is the hemidesmosome. So hemidesmosome will join the dermoepidermal junction with the basal keratinocyte. With the basal keratinocyte. And a desmosome will join the keratinocytes with each other. So if I have a keratinocyte here, Desmosome will be the structure which will be joining these both. So hemidesmosome, this forms the part of dermoepidermal junction. Desmosome is another structure which is very important but it will not be discussed here. We will discuss about the hemidesmosome. So let us come to the basement membrane zone. Basement membrane zone has been classified into lamina lucida and lamina densa. So from the words we can make out that one is a dense layer so tightly packed cells will be there and one is a loosely packed cell. So he, here the meaning of dense and lucida it will depend whether it is more electron dense. So it depends upon the electron density. Lamina lucida is the upper layer it is less electron dense and it abuts the plasma membrane of basal keratinocyte. Whereas the lamina densa it is pres present uh, as a lower layer and it interacts with the mesenchymal matrix of the upper dermis. So an easy way to remember which of these is towards the downside is that lamina densa is down. D is D. So densa is down. So automatically lamina lucida is the upper layer. Now here we will try to understand what the basement membrane zone is made up of. So there are four distinct regions of the epidermal basement membrane from superior to inferior. So what are these? First of all, there is the cytoskeleton, the hemidesmosomal plaque and the plasma membrane of the basal keratinocyte. So here we are talking about the basal keratinocyte. This is the plasma membrane of the basal keratinocyte. And here we see these filaments. These are the keratin intermediate filaments. Now we see this plaque this is the hemidesmosome. This plaque is the hemidesmosome. So we see that it will attach uh, the plasma membrane of the basal keratinocyte with the structures which lie below it. That is the dermoepidermal junction. So as discussed, 
dermoepidermal junction has two parts the lamina lucida and the lamina densa so here we see that there are multiple filaments so the lamina lucida is a 40 nanometer layer containing filaments which connects the hemidesmosome in the basal keratinocyte to the underlying lamina densa so lamina lucida essentially is a connection between the hemidesmosome and the lamina densa then we have the lamina densa which seems like a very electron dense zone and then we have the sublamina densa in which there is presence of anchoring fibrils along so these these red fibers are the anchoring fibrils along with anchoring fibrils we have the anchoring plaques this is the anchoring plaque and then we have the filamentous proteins the collagen elastin so this part forms the sublamina densa part so now we have broken down the epidermal basement membrane into four major ultrastructural regions that is the cytoskeleton which is being formed by the basal keratinocyte and its hemidesmosome then two parts of the uh, dermoepidermal junction that is the lamina lucida and the lamina densa and then below it the sublamina densa so this is the epidermal basement membrane zone the whole zone has been uh, summarized but when we break it down further we will come to know that even these structures have certain molecules in them so we need to understand about those proteins so here is a diagrammatic representation and i know that at one go it seems very difficult to understand but we'll try to break this down again so let us only talk about the hemidesmosome first let us only talk about the hemidesmosome so i told you that this is the keratinocyte plasma membrane and we see an electron dense plaque a very dense plaque which is covered in purple color so this is the hemidesmosome now further we see that there are certain proteins in this so let us just enumerate these proteins we will not learn about them right now just let us enumerate these so this is the bpag1 lectin bpag2 and integrin now here we see that there are two types of proteins one so this is the demarcation of the plasma membrane so there is one type of protein which is inside the cell that is it is intracellular protein whereas there is one type of protein which is not intracellular it is also going down so it is a transcellular protein so there are two intracellular proteins and two transcellular proteins the intracellular proteins are bpag1 and plectin the transcellular proteins are bpag2 and integrin two subunits alpha 6 and beta 4 further down we see that in lamina densa there is laminin 5 which is also abutting into the lamina lucida so further when i will ask you what are the parts of lamina lucida we should always enumerate three parts bpag2 integrin and laminin 5 then we have type 4 collagen and then we have the sublamina densa region so let us come back now along with the diagram side by side we learn the structures so the cytoskeleton of basal keratinocyte so just till here we have keratin 5 and 14 okay we have keratin 5 and 14 here then hemidesmosome and the anchoring filament complex this is the anchoring filament complex so it has plectin okay bpag1 that is bullous pemphigoid antigen 1 bullous pemphigoid antigen 2 integrin tetraspan and laminin 332 or the laminin 5 so we have also enumerated the parts of the hemidesmosome as well as lamina lucida as well as lamina lucida so we have covered these so all the structures which are here up till the lamina lucida then we have the lamina densa so in lamina densa there is laminin 332 laminin 311 laminin 511 nidogen type 4 collagen which is a very important part and perlecon we have enumerated this also and finally we have the sublamina densa region so it has type 7 collagen which is which is the most important part then type 4 collagen elastin and certain other type type 1 collagen type 3 collagen which are present in the sublamina densa region so at a go we have enumerated all the proteins which are present in the epidermal basement membrane now we will try to learn about these one by one first of all is the hemidesmosome so i've tried to just simplify the previous diagram so this is the hemidesmosome these are the intermediate filaments this is the keratinocyte this is the plasma membrane of the keratinocyte 
so we see that two proteins that is bp ag1 and plectin are interacting with the keratin intermediate filaments they are also interacting with the other proteins the transcellular proteins so plectin and bp ag1 are intracellular proteins bp ag2 and integrin are transcellular proteins and plectin and bp ag1 are interacting with these both now we also see so this is the hemidesmosomal plaque this is the hemidesmosome now BPAG1, BPAG2 and integrin is also abutting into the lamina densa, lamina lucida, sorry. So it is forming a part of lamina lucida. Hemidesmosome, it is an electron dense plate and it anchors the keratin intermediate filaments 5 and 14 which are present in the basal keratinocyte and the basal keratinocyte to the lamina densa. Further, as we have discussed, hemidesmosome will have two types of protein, the intracellular and the transcellular. Intracellular will not cross the plasma membrane of basal keratinocyte. Transcellular will cross the plasma membrane of the basal keratinocyte and hang into the lamina lucida. So again a revision, BPAG1 or BP230 which is the molecular weight of the protein and plectin. Then on the transcellular side we have BPAG2 or BP118 or type 17 collagen and alpha 6 beta 4 integrin, different types of uh, integrins which will form the anchoring filaments. Now, the reason why I am focusing so much on this word, filaments, is because we have to differentiate these from anchoring fibrils, which will be present below the lamina densa, that is in the sublamina densa region. Sublamina densa region, which will be made up of collagen 7. Okay. Let us learn about the intracellular proteins. So, first of all, plectin. Plectin is a 500 kilo Dalton protein from the Plekin family. Now we all know then that when we have a protein, a protein has two terminals, a carboxy terminal and an amino terminal. So the amino terminal will bind with something, carboxy terminal will bind with something. So the carboxy terminal of plectin, it binds with keratin intermediate filament and the amino terminal, it binds with BPAG2 or integrin. Next, we have BPAG1. It is a 230 kilo Dalton protein from the Plekin family. Carb carboxy terminal binds with keratin intermediate filaments and amino terminal binds with BPAG2 and integrin. Next, we have the transcellular proteins. That is the BPAG2. Very important protein. BPAG2 is also known as collagen 17, also known as BP180. So, these are its names. So, we can see multiple names given to the same protein must be very important. Parts, so it has an intracytoplasmic globular head and an extracellular part which will abut down and it will move into the lamina lucida with the glycine XY repeat. So, there are two forms of the protein. One is the whole 8, 180 kilo Dalton protein and one is the 120 kilo Dalton protein. So, this is the globular head, this is the protein. So, if I separate the protein from here, it remains only 120 kilo Dalton protein. This is the extracellular domain. The NC16A domain is implicated in bullous pemphigoid. So once we complete our discussion about the dermoepidermal junction, then we will further move on to immunobullous disorders. So there I will be explaining this again. Finally, we have the integrins. So in integrins, it is a heterodimeric protein two parts the alpha part and the beta part so alpha 6 beta 4 they are joining together and forming the integrin which will part form a part of lamina lucida so after all this discussion we have come to the point where we will again enumerate the components of lamina lucida so i initially told you there will be three components of lamina lucida the ectodomain of bpag2 alpha 6 beta 4 integrin and laminin 332 or laminin 5 which is abutting from the lamina densa upwards to the lamina lucida here we see laminin 332 so this is this is a diagram of lamina densa any protein that is moving from the lamina densa to lamina uh, upwards it is moving so we can see that this will also form a part of the lamina lucida this is a very comprehensive diagram only for the purpose of learning. We have just used different colors to explain what different different molecules are present here. So we'll see laminin 332 which is laminin 5, 
laminin 311 and this is the site for binding of the integrin. So the integrin alpha 6 beta 4 it binds here. Then we have type 4 collagen which forms a very important part of lamina tensa, perlecan, fibulin, nidrogen. So different molecules. Now laminins are trimeric proteins, disulfide linked subunits alpha, beta and gamma. So the type of alpha, beta and gamma subunit will make up for the nomenclature. So if we have alpha 3, beta 1, gamma 1, it will be laminin 311. Laminin, perlecan, nidogen and collagen 4. These are ubiquitous components of the basement membrane. They are present in all basement membranes. So collagen 4 is also a heterotrimer. It has 3 alpha chains. Finally, we move to the last part that is the sublamina densa. So this is the sublamina densa. This is the lamina densa. These are the anchoring fibrils. Again, fibrils, not filaments. These are anchoring fibrils which are made up of collagen 7. Then we have collagen 1 and 3 and elastin which is present in the dermis. So, all in all, we have learnt about the dermoepidermal junction and this is the ending of the dermoepidermal junction. All the molecules have been named, all the molecules have been studied. Lastly, there are certain other epidermal adhesion complexes also. Not only the uh, hemidesmosome, on the basolateral aspect of basal keratinocyte, some other adhesion complexes are also present like integrin alpha 3 beta 1, collagen type 13, vinculin, talin and kindling. So kindling, you must have heard the name associated with Kindler syndrome. So with this, we have completed the epidermal, ad how epidermal adhesion occurs, how the epidermis and the dermis are connected by the dermoepidermal junction and what are the parts of the dermoepidermal junction and how they are arranged from top to bottom. So I thank you all for your patient listening. I know this has been a long video, around 20 minutes, but bear with me because uh, I wanted to complete it in one single go. I did not want to break it down into two videos. I wanted to complete it in one single go so that it is easy to understand. So thank you all for your patience and your input is valuable. Any queries that you have, any input that you have, you can always email me. And if you also need the notes, the digital notes, I will, I, I will easily make them available for you kindly. Just send me a mail. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe on this video. And I thank you all for your patience.